So, I was able to catch up with 10 pro wrestling shows after the new year began, and while there were admittedly some matches that I enjoyed greatly, I can't say any of the 10 shows that I watched were good. To be quite honest, some were just downright trash. But that's to be expected with wrestling these days, especially with the two biggest wrestling shows in the world right now being two sides of the same coin in terms of just being plain awful, and even with NJPW not being of the level that it was even two years ago at this point, although that's a separate review for another time probably. But regardless, that isn't anything new, and I watch far too much of this stuff anyways. Here's the wrestling that I watched this week. I'm going to try to keep this one especially short considering the fact that talking about wrestling shows that I fucking hate can become more of a drain on my enjoyment of pro wrestling as a whole, rather than therapeutic in any way. In the last episode of AEW Rampage 2021 was especially infuriating to watch, more so because of the promotion itself seems to be filled with some of the most repugnant names in all of pro wrestling. This episode, you simply couldn't miss Cody Rhodes' overinflated ego as he main evented the show, doing his best to paint himself as polarizing, because clearly the man sees himself as on John Cena's level. And all of his AEW diehard fans are more than willing to dick ride because hating him would mean that they hate AEW, and they just can't have that now, can they? Ty Conti and Anna J versus Penelope Ford and the Bunny was cheap, disgusting, and meaningless. I'm not typically disgusted by hardcore wrestling, because even at its worst, on the indies, it's usually just fucking dumb. This street fight was fucking desperate. The Bunny did a shit job trying to hide the fact that she was blading by comically hiding under the ring apron halfway. Ford fucked up a moonsault off the top to the outside onto a table that was supposed to break, but fucking didn't because she hardly even fucking tried. And the finish of this match was a fucking embarrassment, with the bunny doing a split into the thumbtacks by accident and getting choked out at the end, completely getting rid of any chance of me taking this shit seriously. Darby Allen versus Anthony Bowens was the only match that wound up being a passable one on this show, but even then I'm done giving this promotion a pass. I'm tired of their ceiling being passable. With every show that I decide to tune in for, they shit the bed. With so many other wrestling promotions out there to spend my time on, I could do without any more AEW at this rate. The show is fucking trash. There isn't much to go off of for this show, apart from the main event and the Asuka match, but even then, if you decide to skip this show, you wouldn't be missing much. I think that the show was still passable overall, though. Although Tanaka and Takashi have had better matches in the past, their main event for the Zero One one World Heavyweight Championship was still a good one. My biggest complaint when it comes to that match is the disappointing finish. And as for the Asuka match, I just think she added a lot of flair to a tag team match that would have been completely forgettable if not for her. She was really a standout performer on the entire card, honestly. She looked great in the ring and did a better job than the boys did. It's just that shows like these are the ones that leave me underwhelmed because I want pro wrestling to really keep my attention and stand out. A passable show is a passable show, but I just want better than that. And I do think that Zero One's Happy New Year 2022 show could have been better than what we got. Well, miraculously, this show didn't wind up being complete trash by the end. It was just fucking abysmal, that's all. Again, I don't like spending so much of my time talking about pro wrestling shows that I absolutely fucking hated, and WWE Day 1 was very much one of those shows. It was soulless, purposeless, and at best, dull. More and more as the years pass by in WWE, they're going to have to rely on their bigger pay-per-view attractions like the Royal Rumble or WrestleMania to have a decent shot at putting out an average show. Because those seem to be the only times that WWE gets a kick in the ass and tries to do anything good with all the talent and the resources that they have. 
Day 1 2022 was a dog shit way for them to kick off the new year, but not a surprising one. The biggest red flag that we got before the first match even took place on the main card was WWE advertising this show as a premium live event. That alone should have been enough to make any non-critic say fuck this shit and watch just about anything else, honestly. It's like they straight up told us that this was just going to be a high budget house show, but without any of the fun. If they were smart, they would have saved this card and branding for a special episode of Raw. At least then I'd give them props for moving in a better direction when it comes to that show, since the bar is so low. Instead, we got a completely unnecessary pay-per-view that didn't even give us anything good. WWE Day 1 2022 was another example of WWE at their worst. Maybe there's a good reason why NJPW is so far ahead of its competition in Japan. For as much as I wanted to like Noah's New Year 2022 show, we wound up getting yet another passable show, but this time around on a much grander scale. Now as usual with the majority of Japanese wrestling cards, we mostly got a bunch of tag matches that I personally would have rather skipped, and some championship matches to bring the show to a close. <clears throat> I will say that of those tag matches, Kenta's match kept my attention the most just for how hard hitting he was, and getting to see Ultimo Dragon was a nice surprise for me, although that isn't to say he had all that much to do being hit in an 8 man tag. Of all the championship matches, the best bout by a mile was Keno vs Kaito Kiyomiya for the GHC National Championship. It was hard hitting in its own way. Focused and fucking brutal at times, which I loved. It's just that a lot of the time with these Noah shows that I've seen, the best match of the show isn't even close to the level of the best match of an NJPW or an even stardom show. I think that Noah offers a more realistic take on pure wrestling more than stardom and NJPW does with their own presentations, but they just lack the substance for me to want to buy into them in the same way. They're unique, and they can be great in certain, in certain pockets of the show, but just not overall. At least not yet. Maybe you can tell me exactly what I'm missing. Sticking around for the entirety of a four-hour show, only for about three hours of it to turn out to be a waste of time, isn't something that I want to stick around for, obviously. The show still gets a pass, but only because of those three hours that I did consider to be a waste of time wasn't outright bad. It was just there. A one-match show with a disappointing main event and a passable card at best. The only reason why I tuned into the show is because I didn't want to miss out on Stardom's first show of the new year. And as it turns out, I didn't miss much of anything having watched the show. I kind of broke my makeshift rule of only tuning into the bigger and more special events by watching this show, which is more so just me giving into temptation rather than anything else. I saw the time for this show only going for about 2 hours or so and I thought fuck it. This isn't a terrible way to pass the time. Fortunately for me, it was just a mediocre one. Of the 4 tag matches that we got, not one of them were passable. They were all below average the whole way through, every single match gave me next to nothing, and the big hook that kept me tuned in being the reveal of the two new members of DDM wasn't enough to justify what I had just spent an hour and a half sitting through, and the match itself was just as, un just as unsatisfying. There really isn't much to go off of here really, I've pretty much said it all, maybe I'll Think better next time around and wait for the show with some actual consequence to roll in. We've gotten better shows like this from Stardom in the past, where we got at least one great match somewhere on the card, but not this time apparently. I'm just disappointed. JCW Dead End 2022 was yet another abysmal pro wrestling show that I made the mistake of sitting down for because I was too tempted not to. I should have known, judging by the card going into this one, that I wouldn't enjoy it. But admittedly, I got bit by the New Year bug and the brand new 22, 2022 wrestling shows that are available right now are pretty slim pickings in terms of what interests me. Going into this one, I wanted to believe that JCW was more than just one grand long pre-show for the GCW promotion, filled with meaningless matches that fail to keep 
any of my attention the whole way through. I mean, I enjoyed the presentation of the show at least, if nothing else. I started off my viewing ready to kick back and enjoy some indie wrestling straight out of the gate with the first match. I was left aggravated and upset by the sloppy botched finish between Edith Surreal and Frontman Ja. The rest of the show could only be described as a slow descent into monotonous pro wrestling, pushing me to the edge of my patience by the very last 5 minutes of the main event. I'll say the same for this show as I've said for plenty others in the past. If you miss this one, you don't miss much at all. You're probably much better off waiting until a decently built card comes along on a GCW if you want that itch scratched for you. Because after this one, I'm not so sure that there's any real appeal at all to the JCW promotion in comparison. Dead End 2022 was a drag and nothing more than that. This was one of the better GCW shows that I've seen to date, especially because of the Rumble match taking up a good chunk of a 3 hour runtime. I've often believed that GCW is at its worst more often than not when they run 3 hour shows with a string of normal matches and not many stakes. But that wasn't the case here with the Die For This 2022, with the show opening with a great GCW Tag Team Championship match between the Briscoes defending against Alex Zane and Blake Christian, and then following that match up with an interesting impromptu David vs. Goliath match between Calvin Tangman and Yoya, and then following that match up with Scotty Tuhati making his return to pro wrestling in six years, taking on Joey, uh, Joey Janela in a surprisingly good match that kept me hanging until the very end. Then, of course, there was a 20-man rumble, which turned out pretty great in the end, thanks to the performers actually giving enough of a shit to make a rumble match work in the first place when they could have easily just phoned it in. And then concluding with the main event of the show, where you got the kind of deathmatch pro wrestling that GCW is known for, with Alex Colon defending his GCW Ultra Violent Championship against John Wayne Murdoch, in a death match that while didn't let up on the violence all that much, with John bleeding excessively from his arm and ear almost to a disturbing extent, didn't give us that satisfying conclusion. As it seems as if GCW were going for an Alex Colon heel turn at the end, with that instead just making John and the promotion look really, really bad. Really, it was just the main event and admittedly the Tankman vs. Yoya match that brought the show down a notch, where in Tankman vs. Yoya's case, the match got completely ridiculous and fell apart by the end, with the two not yet having developed any chemistry in the ring together when clearly it seems like they needed to. And I'll be honest, tuning into this show I fully expected to be turning into, or tuning into, not turning into, a total dumpster fire because GCW tends to give you those more often than they'd ever give you anything good. But here with the die for this, I felt like we got a decent show. Not by any means good or even great, but a decent show. Which is all I could have really asked for. And here we go. Fuck NXT 2.0. The show was fucking garbage. I had some hope that NXT would be able to maintain their level of quality through this unnecessary and forced change in their presentation, but unfortunately it seems like the quality of the old NXT is well and truly gone as well. I legitimately wasted 2 hours of my time watching WWE spit on what NXT used to be. Every match apart from the opener sucked and even then the opener wasn't good. This new breed of talent born out of NXT 2.0 rebrand has nothing on the original. Who in the flying fuck wants to see Tony D'Angelo in a featured feud with Pete Dunne? Who in the fuck asked for Mandy Rose as NXT Women's Champion? Who the fuck wants to see AJ Styles feud with Grayson Waller? Who the fuck wanted bad SNL skits dressing up as backstage segments? Who the fuck wanted to see Von Wagner in a featured position on the show as someone who we're supposed to, as someone who we're supposed to take seriously? Who the fuck wanted any of this over the actual substance that the NXT that came before had? The original NXT did a better job at developing wrestlers organically and didn't just fucking slap them on the main card like this new NXT does. There wasn't anything on this card that was worth the time. I'm legitimately frazzled after watching this fucking dumpster fire of a show. 
I so badly wanted this to be good, but we didn't even get anywhere close to good anywhere on this card. Walter, Champa, MSK, Imperium, Roderick Strong, and even Carmelo Hayes all wasted on bullshit. And that women's championship match was a fucking joke. Mandy Rose's NXT Women's Champion right now is a fucking joke. WWE really brought the quality of NXT down to the main roster's level, maybe even worse. Calling NXT 2.0 an unnecessary abomination would be too kind for them. The worst part of the show, hands fucking down, was that women's triple threat for the NXT Women's Championship. And I put all of that and whatever fucking moron in the back thought that putting a women's world championship on Mandy Rose was a good idea. These fucking people put the strap on her because they like thinking with their dicks. She's mediocre in the ring at best, and no matter how badly some people look at her and think that she's the next Trish Stratus, she shares nothing in common with Trish apart from looks. She hasn't come anywhere close to the wrestler that Trish was. And yet, because she bears some resemblance to her, she gets placed at the top of the entire women's division in NXT. Like, throw this bullshit up on Raw for the people who don't give a shit about pro wrestling. NXT was a sacred ground for wrestling fans like me, and they threw it all away for shit like this. They threw out an entire system that worked for a system that's doomed to fail. Where's NXT 2.0 gonna be in a few years when the new dogs running the show stop caring after their ideas fail over and over again, and all of these TV networks don't even want to buy into this garbage anymore? I honestly don't even know what else to say. I'm just done. New Year's Evil 2022 was trash. This was the final nail on the coffin of the old NXT, and it was fucking gross. So AEW Dynamite's debut episode on TBS was garbage. Apart from a really good match to open the show, this episode took a fucking nosedive as soon as CM Punk and MJF went out there to trade grade school insults with each other and talk some shit about the WWE, because what else is new? From there, we got a shit TBS championship match between Ruby Soho and Jade Cargill, a shit Wardlow squash, a complete and total waste of Aleister Black, and a main event where Fenix got his arm dislocated in a completely reckless spot. AEW has well and truly assembled the most insufferable roster in pro wrestling in recent memory. I tuned in for this show hoping that I get something worthwhile, and instead I got yet another dumpster fire of a show. It's times like these where I genuinely have to consider not even covering AEW pay-per-view events, much less their special attraction shows. With all of the wrestling that I put on the back burner just so that AEW just so that AEW could aggravate me with their unique brand of garbage television, I'm doing myself a huge disservice by keeping up with a promotion that refuses to be anything other than a blight on pro wrestling in 2022. Another dumpster fire for the good guys. The main event of the Tokyo Joshi Pro 2022 show had heart. Mizuki fought valiantly against Miyu Yamashita for her Princess of Princess Championship in what wound up being one of the best matches of 2022 so far, and easily one of the best TJPW matches in the history of the promotion. It's a must-watch if you haven't seen it, and it had all of the wrestling goodness that you could ever want, really. With that being said, though, I wish I could have a similar level of praise for the rest of the card. Last year's Tokyo Joshi Pro Show wound up being the show that sold me on TJPW as a promotion, when prior to that show, I was having my doubts. The main event from last year's show and the match between Yamashita and Maki Ito were two of my personal favorite matches from 2021, and the undercard also happened to range from really good to even great in some parts. The undercard on this year's show wound up being completely forgettable, outside of Maki Ito winning the International Princess Championship from Hikari Noah, in a match that I just couldn't bring myself to care about in the end. And I don't want to leave with the impression that this was a bad show, because honestly it wasn't. All that I'm really saying here is that for the sake of your time not being wasted on a disappointing show, you're a lot better off watching the main event and nothing else. 
And that just about wraps it up for me this week. Here's hoping for a round of great shows next week, because this week was a bit of a drag. Although I probably can't even say an all-time great match or two is a completely terrible poll, though. And I've sat through far worse or far less anyways.